SMEs are the largest contributors to employment around the world, but lack of credit is usually what stunts their growth and stifles their innovation. This isn't just an emerging economy problem, but it's actually one we're seeing here in the UK, in a developed economy. So, Lloyds Bank Head of Trade Sales, John Bruger, has joined us here at TFR to share his views on SME exporter support in a developed economy. Welcome, John, to TFR. Great to see you Thank here. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, I was hoping you could enlighten us a bit more on why the UK's 5 million SMEs are not, according to the House of Lords Committee on SMEs, getting enough. In other words, they're not getting enough export finance, and they're certainly not getting the UK EF support that they should be getting. At least that's what the Lords think. In particular, this committee is saying that the transition from loan decisions being made by local bank managers to a centralised process driven by some sort of formula has weakened SME access to bank finance. So what's your response as a, as a, as a UK bank to all of this? Well, let me deal with the last part of that question first because that's, that's, uh, that's a commonly uh, misunderstood perception about the, the history of, uh, oh. of, of branch banking. The old Captain Mannering image of a, the local Indeed. manager that made all the decisions didn't really exist. They looked after the branch, right. they looked after personal customers and small businesses. They certainly weren't experts in uh, export finance. And they certainly didn't have unlimited powers to, to lend money. So the way we in Lloyd's look after the SMEs is we have relationship managers that do nothing but look after SMEs. Uh, they don't look after branches. They don't look after personal customers. They're focused purely on SMEs. They're based in the local communities. They're not centralized. So they sit close to their customers, very close to their customers. And in many cases, they're actually industry, industry specialized. So they will deal with just manufacturers, for example, or just property. So they become experts okay. in the industry. So I think that the model that we have for supporting SMEs generally is a lot better than you would have expected to see several years ago. It's actually a very focused model. Now, in terms of export support, um, the vast majority of SMEs don't export. Uh, it's a relatively small percentage mm. that want to or have an inclination to. So okay. the first problem is encouraging those that don't to actually start exporting. How are you doing that? Well, we, we, we communicate with the local communities through introducers. We have seminars. Okay. We will often introduce non-exporting SMEs to their exporting peers and say, well, that that's, that's how they... Does that work that's, well? It works extremely well because it, they're more likely to, to, to believe a company in a similar uh, condition as they yeah. are in terms yeah. of size and industry than they are a bank. I mean, if we say exporting is good for you, you know, how would how would we know? Frankly, <laughs> we're not in the in the manufacturing business. No. But another manufacturer will will explain what the benefits are in terms of their pr profitability and uh, uh, spread of risk and so on. Okay, talking of risk, um, that's one of the uh, the bits of feedback I've been getting on TFR concern mm -hmm. about risk lending to SME exporters. So, what ideas are you coming up with to speed up decision making? You've told us about your structure and how that's working well um, but the exporters I've been speaking to have been telling me that they need to be able to offer competitive financial terms mm -hmm. to their customers to be able to get that deal in the first place mm -hmm. so so what are you doing to help uh, your customers get their deals the finance package is a key component yeah. of their competitive offering so we want to be involved key for us is we need to be involved in an early stage. We have a team, in fact, my team supports the relationship managers and talks to the SMEs directly and they're expert on export finance and, and trade finance generally. So we need to get our people sat in front of those customers at an early stage. Okay. What we don't like is a customer coming to us with a fait accompli and waving a contract I see. saying, I've just signed a contract for a million pounds to export my goods to Azerbaijan. Can I have some money, please? <laughs> That's not a good starting point for the, no. for the uh, uh the way we support them. We really want to be involved at the beginning so we can help advise them because they need to be able to execute the contract. The risk that is, they are running is a commercial risk. They need to be able to perform. If they can perform, we can manage and mitigate the payment risk and provide the finance, but we can't manage their performance. So we start early in the discussion and make sure they're able to do that because that's for their protection as well as for yeah. our protection. Yeah. There was a big push by the government, wasn't there, about supply chain finance at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. A lot of enthusiasm, but not much take up from the banks. At least that's the uh, that's what the papers are saying. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder what your response was to that, because obviously supply chain finance can't happen until the invoices are there in the first place. And you don't yeah. get the invoices until you've got the deal, and round yeah. we go. Yeah, I mean, supply chain finance in the, in the UK context is is generally driven 
by the buyer of the goods, not the seller of the goods, oh. because you have to have a program in place yep. whereby the buyer approves the payables, approves the invoices, and then we purchase those invoices from the seller. So supply chain finance in that context is not necessarily the best way to, to, to support exports. Oh. It's, it's, it's actually a better way to, to finance the on-sale of goods that you've imported. Okay. Um, so for export finance, we're really looking at uh, the, the quality of the receivable. We're looking yep. at the, the mit risk mitigation, which may be credit insurance, maybe a UKEF yep. uh, program, okay. or it may be a letter of credit. Okay. Those are the typical ways we would do that. This has been really helpful. Thanks very much for coming in to talk to us. And um, good luck with, uh, with your deals and your clients. Thank you very much. Thank you.